Ready? Okay. Hey, it's uh, Spinny Mantis and Squirt Reynolds and Reynolds. poor lady having a dang seizure. So it's not good to make her. <coughs> Sup, girl. This poor woman is very ill. Lord no. This woman is suffering. She is in no state to have a conversation. Nothing Laudanum can. All right. Mr. Poirot? Here. My respects, madame. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Have you seen the nurse? She should have been here by now. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh! The the after she spoke, she went... This is uncomfortable. Now we can rummage. It's closed. Lady Clark is in pain. I have to give her an injection of morphine to ease her suffering. Really? We're going to do this ourselves? Lady Clark is in pain. I have to give her an injection of morphine to ease her suffering. Look like morphine. See where the mm -mm. morphine is? The spring. Which I have no idea why like it wanted us to to get the spring. The telephone is ringing. The Clark residence. Detective Hercule Poirot speaking. How do you do, Mr. Poirot? I'm Lady Clark's nurse. I wanted to let you know that I won't be able to come for her injection today. Might Miss Gray be able to do it? She has just left, but I will take care of it. Thank you. Uh. That's very kind of you. Um, you'll find the skeleton key to open the medicine cabinet hidden in the lion trophy. You can count on me. Ah, it's like a Au revoir, mademoiselle. Oh, thank you kindly. Goodbye, Mr. Poirot. Get some man Oh, yeah, sure. You can give an injection to our death deathly patient. No problem. Meow. Mm. Here is the skeleton key. Well, that was the easiest. Is there something else in, he in this frame? Like... April 1925, Aceh province, Sumatra. Lady Clark is in pain. You ass! Really wants us to get back upstairs. The poor lady is <coughs> suffering.
Ah, Mr. Poirot. Oh, I feel better now. <coughs> Thank you for your help. What sort of condition does Morph? I don't know. You asked for me, chère madame. Yes. Yes, of course. I wish to speak with you. But what was it about? <laughs> kind of like, I'm sort of like... No doubt. <laughs> you wish to talk to me about what happened to your husband? Ah, yes. Oh, poor Carmichael. Has the madman who killed him been caught? <coughs> Not yet, chère madame. <coughs> there was a great many people in Cheston on the day of the murder. Indeed. People go straight to the beach. They don't come near Coombe's side. So, there were no strangers around the house that day? Who said that? The people who live here. Your brother-in-law, Miss Gray. Miss Gray? Oh, I don't like her. Franklin wanted her to stay, but I insisted she should go. Immediately. You are entitled to do so, naturally. I'm pleased that you approve. The others have been taken in by her. But at least you can see through that self-pity act. See what she's up to. Oh. I've finished with this subject. This subject will probably be useful to me. Frank? Zither. This subject will probably be useful to me. What is it? What is the object? A silver comb. We got a bronze comb, a silver comb. This lady's just like leaving combs all over the place. Now we need to find a gold comb. Up, oh, it's in her hand. Match your balls. This couple appears to be having fun. Cute little radio. Lady Clark and Sir Carmichael were very happy, but they did not have any children. Maybe that's why they <laughs> were happy. Just yeah. saying. Could be, could be. So what? She's sleeping. I must find a way to wake her up gently. <laughs> the Poker with the spring. <laughs> um, comb her hair. Use a different comb. Use the key. But they're saying you can combine things. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, like I said, we'll make a zither. Let's do this. I'm going to combine the... Spring. You're gonna put it on the bottom of her chair so it, like Oh oh wake up It's gotta be a puzzle. All right, obviously there's two more combs. You have to figure I must find a way to wake her up gently. Oh, you can find a way. 
way she to wake, wake me up. up gently to put a hat mm -hmm. over her face. It is not the right time. I must find a way to wake. Radio somewhere. Was the radio upstairs? Yes, it was. Like a nice little. Yeah, over in the corner. I do not need to make a telephone call now. So maybe that is what it is. Turn the radio on. Lady Clark and Sir Carmichael were very happy, but they did not have any children. But that's a good idea. Maybe that medicine? That one. Maybe we can't. Uh, it's like she's Just like sleeping. Flipper. Maybe. I must find a way. <laughs> There's no more points over here. We can't. Yep. I've finished with this subject. Huh. Lady Clark no, and Sir we... Carmichael were very happy. But they did not have any children. Okay. Yeah, that's how we went downstairs. Oh. So that goes downstairs. What about that? Uh... That... Oh, it slid up. That means I. It did say something about combining objects. But maybe it was just. All together, and it's going to be a key for some other puzzle. But neither of us have it. Did you look, and you've looked at all the drawers, and so this is just I finished with this subject. Jack, mm -hmm. so we can't do. Which I would have assumed we can't change our viewpoint. Every we can't go to the medicine. We tried to use all the different objects on her. Sweet. Observe that. Lady Clark and Sir no. Michael were very happy. Oh, maybe it's the other thing those cabinets. That's what it is. Thinking. The 
combs. But we're, we're never missing number one and... Really? This is where right. the combs oh, we're missing go. One I have to put a new spring here. You can do that. We've got him. Boy, howdy. I hope that Hastings will not be cross with me. Does not make any sound. More plate. So, to finish, to figure out where plate number one. So it can't be there. Uh, this object would probably be useful to me. <coughs> All right, there we go. I hope that Hastings will not be cross with me. That's right. That's what wake her up. <laughs> oh, what are we talking about? Ah, yes, uh, uh, Thora Gray. Oh, Carmichael had great esteem for her, but for me, she was nothing but a hypocrite. Prove. You're probably right, madame. You have seen through her. I'm so pleased that I've convinced you. <laughs> Are you seeing these little jerky mice? Oh, man. You are very harsh. Do not forget that the girl is an orphan. Yes, and she used the fact to get around men. Take Franklin. He's fallen for her sweet-talking charms. Oh, he's a lovely boy, very plucky and sure of himself. Lovely boy with gray hair. But so naive. Oh, when it comes to women. Hmm.
Miss Gray did look after you very well, though. Outwardly. But she's hiding something. I think she tried to poison me. Miss Gray? A poisoner? But everybody appears to like her. It proves she knows what she's doing. She's manipulative and she's a liar. A liar? Let's see, didn't she say that on the day of the crime nobody was around Coombside? That is correct. Well, at eleven o'clock I saw her talking to... Uh, someone. Really? And what was this man like? An ordinary sort of man, with a very plain face. Oh, I don't remember well. Was he a gentleman? No, he was not, not a gentleman. It would be best oh, to leave her again. To sleep now. The telephone in the hall is ringing. The telephone. I think I have sound effects turned down, that's why we... Hello? Poirot, is that you? Hastings here. Thank you for calling. Have you received a new letter from the murderer? No, thank goodness. How are things in Churston? I question Lady Clark, but I will not leave until I have examined everything of interest to me here. Fortunately, Franklin is absent, and I have a skeleton key. Have you seen Thora Gray again? Briefly. But rest assured, I intend to summon her to London soon. She's a fascinating girl. But secretive. I would like to ask her a few questions. Poirot, she wouldn't hurt a fly. Each to his own, my friend. Yours are pretty often mine old ladies that have the maladies. Poirot, are you mocking me? No ill intended, rest assured. A bientôt, mon ami. This plate appears to be able to move, but something is blocking it. This plate appears... I must need something to continue. This plate appears... This plate appears... This plate appears to be... This plate appears.
July 1920, Alaska Peninsula. Franklin appears to be very active. Franklin Clark appears to be a typical British gentleman, a good sportsman, a hunter, a traveller. Bye-bye.